In this video, we will go over a copy of the uh, midterm preparation quiz. The first question on the quiz gives you all the formulas that will be available during the actual proctored midterm. And you can call, always go back to question one in order to see those formulas if you need them to work a problem. So let's go ahead and get started. Determine if the set is well-defined or not well-defined, the set of US zip codes. Now this set would be well defined because if I gave that definition to you, you could write down the list of all the zip codes. Determine whether the set is finite or infinite, the set of odd numbers greater than 35. This would be an infinite set because it would keep going and going and going. Express the set in roster form. A set of natural numbers between 10 and 175. So we know that 10, I'm sorry, 176. We know that 10 and 176 are not included in that set. So the set's gonna begin at 11 and continue up to 175. So the correct answer is gonna be D. Express the following set in set builder notation. And set builder notation, notice the four answer choices is always written as X such that X is an element in this case of the natural numbers. And we notice these numbers are between 11 and 18. So we want to look at the four choices and see which of those includes 11 and 18. And we notice that answer A would be the correct answer because there are uh, less than or equal to inequality signs, which would show that 11 and 18 are included. Write a description of the set. B equals the element spring, summer, fall, and winter. And that would be the set of the seasons, which is choice A. Determine whether the sets below are equal, equivalent, both, or neither. The set on the left has two elements, and the set on the right also has two elements. So we know that these are at least um, equivalent. Now let's look at the elements. The elements in the set on the left are 3 and 14. The elements in the set on the right are 31 and 4, so they're not the same elements. So therefore, the sets are not equal. So they're equivalent, but not equal. Decide if the given statement is true or false. So the statement says 9, the element 9, is an element of that set. So we notice that 9 is not an element of that set, so we know the statement is false. And we look at the four answer choices, and we see that choice D is the correct answer. List all the subsets of the set that includes three elements, wolf, cat, and sheep. So we know the formula for subsets is 2 to the n. And in this case, n is 3, so 2 to the third power is 8. So I have eight subsets, and if I look in my answers, I notice that only choice B has eight and actually has the correct subsets. Question 10. Draw a Venn diagram that illustrates the solution described, the situation described. Set A and B are overlapping sets, so that means that they have an intersection, so the correct answer here would be Venn diagram A. In question 11, we're given three sets. U is the set of colleges in a country. A is a set of colleges that have a ba baseball team. B is a set of colleges that have a humanities program. Describe A prime, which is A complement in words. So A complement is the set of the colleges in the universal set that are not part of set A, and that would be the set of colleges that do not have a baseball team, which is choice D. Question 12. The chart shows the favorite intramural sports at a community college in, for three different years, indicating which region of the Venn diagram each sport belongs. And we're going to look at the sport uh, softball. So first thing I do is look at each of these and I say, where do I see softball? And I actually see softball in all three uh, years. So therefore, when I look at my Venn diagram, I know it's going to go into region five. Now for question 13, They've given me a Venn diagram with elements shown in the various sets, and they want me to find the roster form of the indicated set. And for some of the questions on this prep quiz, I've gotten some detailed solutions for you because I have to show a little bit more work than I can show on the copy of the test itself. So here's question 13. So they want us to find A union B, the complement of that set. So first I need to find A union B. And so I look at the set, I look at the Venn diagram rather, and I notice Here is A union B. It's all the elements in A or B or both. And it actually includes the numbers 1 through 10. 
And then if I take the complement of that, that's all the elements in the universal set that are not included in A union B, and that is simply two elements, which is 11 and 12, which is choice D. So the correct answer for this one is D. All right, for question 14, I also have a detailed solution because in order to solve this one, I need to actually create the Venn diagram. So the problem tells me in a survey of 93 resorts, it was found that, and then there's a list of attributes that those uh, resorts had. Now, remember when we fill out the Venn diagram, we always go into region five and start there, and we notice it tells us that five had all five features, have all three features, and I've put that into region five. Then I start working my way out I've got uh, seven that have a spa and a child's club, but I've already got a five in there, so I've got a two left, so that's going to go into region number two. You can notice I've put that in already. And so I continue to fill in the Venn diagram numbers. I fill in regions one to seven. I add those numbers up and subtract from 93 to find that there are six uh, resorts that don't have any of these features. Now I can go ahead and answer the questions or in the problem. So how many of the resorts had only a spa, only a spa? And I notice that's going to be region one, and that's a 12. How many had exactly one of these features? Exactly one. So exactly one is going to be a 12 plus 20, so it's region 1, plus 3, plus 7, and if you add those numbers up, you get 64, exactly 1, that's 64. How many had at least one of these? So that's everything in the Venn diagram except the six that have none of those, and if you remember from our calculations to find the region 8 number, 87 have at least one. And how many have exactly two? Exactly two is going to be region 2, 4, and 6, when I add those numbers up, I get 18. And finally, how many had none of those features? And again, that's the region 8 number, which is a 6. And I also have a detailed solution for number 15 because, again, I had to create the Venn diagram. Mrs. Bolo's second grade class of 30 students conducted a pet ownership survey. Results of the survey indicate that eight students own a cat, 15 own a dog, and five own both. How many students surveyed own neither a cat or nor a dog? So I start in region two and it told me five students had both. And then it told me that eight students had a cat, but I've already entered five into region two. So three students have a cat only. And likewise, 10 students have only a dog. And if I add the three numbers in regions one, two, and three, I'll find that 12 students had neither a cat nor a dog. And that was actually the question that was asked here. So the answer to that question is A. So 12 students had neither a cat nor a dog. The process of reasoning to a general conclusion through observations of specific cases is called, and this is called, to general from specific is called inductive reasoning. Use inductive to predict the next three numbers in the sequence. So we look for the pattern here. And if we notice, 6 plus 7, the first two um, numbers in the sequence add up to the next number in the sequence. And 7 plus 13 gives me a 20. 13 plus 20 gives me a 23. This is actually a um, specific kind of a pattern called a Fibonacci type of sequence that we study in liberal arts too. Well, if we go ahead and add the two numbers, 33 plus 53, we get 86. And then if we add 86... Sorry, my number is not going into well today. 86 and 53, we get uh, 139, 39. And finally, the last number is 225, 225. Determine the next figure in the pattern. So if we notice the pattern going on here, they're coloring those little protruding items on the figure. And so the next figure would certainly be choice A. Write the negation of the statement. So it says everyone is asleep, so the negation would simply be not everyone is asleep. Uh, let P and Q represent the following statements, and then write this uh, compound statement in words. So we see that it's going to be, it. it's an if and only if statement, so it's going to be, if it is not snowing, it is not snowing outside, if and only if it is not cold, which is answer A.
Translate the statement, the doctor did not prescribe medicine, but, but the patient recovered into symbols, then construct a truth table. And I have a detailed solution because I had to create the truth table for this one. All right, so we can write this first in symbolic form. The doctor did not prescribe, so that's going to be not P, but is and. So and, uh, the, doc the patient recovered, so that's a Q. And here's my truth table here, so I put down my P's and my Q's. And then I went ahead and I brought over in column one the negation of the P's. I brought over the Q's into column two. And then the connective here is the word and. So I'm looking for two true statements, which is case three. And then if I look up at my answers there, the correct answer is going to be choice D. So choice D is the correct answer for that one. And I'm going to stay over here because I have a detailed solution for the next couple. So number 22 Determine the truth value of this statement using the following conditions. So what you're going to do is take the statement and replace the uh, symbols with the truth values. So first we're going to say um, P is going to be true, Q is false, and R is false. So I've taken the statement and I've substituted in not P. If P is true, then not P is false. Uh, Q was um, false, so not Q is true. And then P was false. Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one here. Um, this should be a P here. This should be a true. I'm sorry, this should be a true. And R was false. Uh, same decision down here. The connector here is an OR, so this is true. Then we negate it and we get a false. And so the final answer here is this one's going to be false. And then on the second scenario of the same problem, it tells me P is true, Q is true, and R is true. They're all true drop their truth values in, and we get, um, let's see, we've got a not P, so this is a false and a false, and this should be a true. And a true. Yeah. And so therefore, we've got a true and a true, which is a true, and we come up again, and again, in this case, this is another false. And the next problem, we need a truth table again, and it's a conditional. And I've built the truth table down here, and we look at the last column, which is column number five, and we compare that to the answers, and we see that this matches answer choice D. And number 24, determine whether this is a tautology, self-contradiction, or neither. And in order to do this, I need to build the truth table. So I built my truth table down here and I look at column number five and I see that I don't see all trues or all falses. So this is neither a tautology nor a self-contradiction. And number 25 is similar to an earlier problem we did where they give us the truth values for the simple statements. We replace those into the compound statement um, and come up with a truth value. And in this case, we come up with a true. And number 26 says, use De Morgan's laws or a truth table to determine whether the two statements are true. So remember the one De Morgan's law said the um, negation of the conjunction is the uh, disjunction of the negated statements. And if you look at the right-hand statement they gave it, it's not the same as what we see here in De Morgan's law. So these statements are not equivalent. And number 27 Determine which, if any, of the three statements are equivalent. They've given me three statements here. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick my P and Q. P is going to be Jan as well. Q is going to be Jan is still recovering. And we write each of the three statements logically. So I've got P or Q. I've got if Q, then not P. If P, then not Q. Now, notice that number two is a conditional. And number three is the contrapositive of that conditional. So we know that those two are equivalent. And then uh, for choice number one, we know that we can write a um, disjunction as a conditional, um, but that's not the choice that we see there, um, that, that we see in, in number two or number three. And so the answer here is simply going to be that two and three are equivalent. Number one is not equivalent to any of the others. And let us scroll back over here so we can go back here. So write the contrapositive of the statement. If a triangle is not equivalent, then the three sides of the triangle are not equal. And then we're going to use the contrapositive to determine if the statement is true. 
So the contrapositive, remember, we flip the order of the simple statements and we negate both of them. So if the three sides of a triangle are equal, then the triangle is, a quadru is an equilateral. And that is a true statement, so the answer here is going to be A. All right, now we're moving on to the geometry section. So identify the figure as a line, a half ray, ray, line segment, etc. So this is going to be an open line segment with the endpoints of F and D. So there's the correct answer there. Um, classify angle G as what kind of an angle. And if we notice angle G there is a straight angle. Uh, find the requested angle and we want to find the supplement of 180. So we know that 100 supplement of 81 degrees, I'm sorry. Supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. So if we subtract 81 from 180 degrees, we'll find that the supplementary angle is 99 degrees. All right, number 32, we need a little work for this one. So we've got a picture here of two angles that are supplementary, which means that their angle measures are 180 when we add them together. And so we can set up an equation using the information in the figure. So we see that x plus 4x minus 5 equals 180. On the left side, I combine my x terms. I get 5x minus 5 equals 180. Add 5 to both sides. 5x equals 180. And then finally divide by 5. So I get x equals 37. And that's the measure of angle 2. And then for angle 1, I can either subtract 37 from 180 to get 143. I can also use the formula shown for the measure of that angle, 4x minus 5, 4x times 37 minus 5, also gives me 143 degrees. Name, uh, identify the name of the angle shown in the figure. So we notice that they're all alternative and they're also exterior, so the correct answer here is A. Identify the polygon by name. If it's a quadrilateral, give it specific name. So it is a quadrilateral. And we notice the indication, those little markings on the sides tell us all sides are the same length, and it is a rhombus. It's not a square because it doesn't have right angles in the corners, but it's a rhombus. Identify the triangle as acute, right, obtuse, and then equilateral isosceles or scaling. So we know it's obtuse because it has one angle greater than 90, and so therefore it must be a scalene. These three sides are different lengths. Okay, the figures are similar. We're going to have a detailed solution on this one. Find the length of the missing side, designate it with the x. So we're going to set up the ratios, and we're going to cross multiply to solve. So I set up my proportion as x is to 3, so the right left triangle to the right triangle, and then I decided to use 12 to 4, and then I cross multiply and solve for x, and I get x equals 9. And let's just stay here. Uh, we've got a line from the top of a cliff to a point, passes just over the top of a pole nine feet high and meets the ground at a point six feet from the base of the pole. And that's shown there on the right side of that triangle. If the point is 99 feet from the base of the cliff, how high is the cliff round to the nearest unit? So I've got uh, similar triangles again. So I can set these up as X is to nine, as 99. So I'm doing the large triangle to the small triangle as 99 is to six. Uh, cross multiply and solve, and I come up with x equals 149.5, which rounds off to, I'm sorry, 148.5, which rounds off to 149. So the correct answer is 149. And let's stay over here now. Find the area. So we know the area of a triangle is one half of the base times the height. And in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and convert those two uh, base and height measurements to improper fractions so I can simply multiply. And so I've got one and two thirds. Remember how you convert it, take the denominator, multiply it by the whole number part. So three times one is three plus two gives me five thirds. And for the base, I've got four and a quarter, which is the same thing as 17 fourteenths. And then I put those into the area formula, multiply, I've got 85 over 24. Now I'm gonna convert back to a mixed number, divide 24 into 85 and I get three and 13 24 uh, which is answer C. And remember the units here, we're talking about square units, this is square meters. Okay, that was number 38. And we can go back over here for number 39. Number 39 is a perimeter question. So for the perimeter, all you do is add up the lengths of the sides. So 35 plus 13 plus 29 plus 13. And you end up here with um, uh, 90. 
90 meters. Okay, the next question is using the Pythagorean theorem. So Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is c squared. They've given me um, a and c. I can solve for b. I set up my Pythagorean theorem and I find the length of side b is 24. I'm going to put that on the figure, 24 kilometers. And then they want me to find the perimeter. So the perimeter is simply the distance around the figure. So if I add these sides together, 24 plus 10 is 30 floor plus 26, I get 60. And that is simply, again, in kilometers. So this was 24 kilometers. And then for the area, 1 half of the base times the height. So we're going to take 1 half of 24 times 10, and we get 120 kilometers squared. And then we have a circle. Find the circumference, circumference of the circle. And remember, again, the, all the formulas are back in question one. 2 pi r. Uh, they've given me the diameter, but I need the radius, so I divide the diameter in half. And I've got 6, so 2 times 3.14 times 6 gives me 37.68. And this is in miles. There's a the circumference. And then this is the area and circumference of a circle. So area is pi r squared. My radius here is 2, so I've got 2 squared or 4 pi multiplied by 3.14, and I get 12.57 square centimeters. And circumference again, 2 pi r. Interesting, come up also with 4 pi. However, for circumference, it's 12.57 centimeters because we're doing a linear distance. And now we've got a trapezoid, and we want to find the area and the perimeter. And if you notice here, the height there is given as a foot measurement, but we need it in inches, so we're going to use three inches rather than a quarter of a foot because we have to have all the same units. And the area of a trapezoid is given as one half of base one plus base two times the height. So base one, uh, there's two bases there, nine and 17, and I went ahead and multiplied through and I got an area, and this should be actually squared. It should be 39 square inches. And the perimeter, walk your distance around the outside of the figure, and you'll get 36 inches. Determine the shaded area. This is an interesting question um, because method one, we could, in order to find the area of the shaded region, we need this length of the side. So I can envision that right over here is a triangle with two sides of 10 inches, half the length of one of the sides of that larger square, and I can find the length of the side of that small shaded square, and I get 14.14, and then use the area of the square, which is um, side squared, to get an area of 200 square inches. I could also notice that the shaded region is half of the area of the larger um, square region. So if I take 20 and square it, I get 400 square inches, and take that in half, and I also get 200 square inches. So two different ways to work that one. Uh, find the volume of the solid. So this is a cylinder, and the volume is 2 pi r h. We find the area of the base and then multiply by the height. Um, here the base is um, the uh, radius, rather, is 7.5, and the height is 17. Substituting into the formula, I come up with 800.7, and this is cubic yards because it's volume. And then finally, a surface area question. And remember, surface area is in square units. And there are six surfaces on this figure, three sizes, two of each. And if I go ahead and calculate the area of each of those and multiply those by two and add them all together, I get 66 square feet. And that's it for the review.